it's, a, it's more than just honor or you know an, an obligation. It's human nature. It's your family, your brothers, your Marines. You know, that's, that's what you do for, for a brother. You did your duty above and beyond, and you kept the faith with the highest traditions of the Marine Corps that you love. It's like I told Seth Rodriguez Chavez, we're going to either go in there or we're going to die trying. 2011 marks the 70th anniversary of the attack on Pearl Harbor and the 10th anniversary of the terrorist attacks on 9-11. The relationship between December the 7th and September the, the 11th took place 60 years apart, both by airplanes. It was unexpected and on December the 7th. Again, it was unexpected on September the 11th. Who would ever think such a thing happening of all places? The towers in New York. It's unbelievable. Still can't comprehend such a thing as happening. And I couldn't comprehend such a thing happening in 1941. And I had seen some of the most horrible things that a 20-year-old kid couldn't really ever imagine. And when you see a ship made out of steel, do you know the hulls of those ships were 16-inch solid steel? The Japanese built torpedoes, had wood fins and all, so they float just two foot under the water. The harbor was only 40 feet deep. By that time, I was standing guard by the dry docks. Nobody thought anything except it's just a beautiful day. Yesterday, December 7th, 1941, a date which will live in infamy. When the dust settled, the Japanese attack claimed the lives of 2,409 Americans and left another 1,200 wounded. No matter how long it may take us to overcome this premeditated invasion, the American people in their righteous might will win through to absolute victory. The attacks on Pearl Harbor ignited a fierce national pride that caused many Americans to want to serve their country. Places like Paris Island, San Diego, and Montford Point all saw large numbers of recruits come to defend their nation as Marines. The devastating toll of these incidents was eclipsed only by the awe-inspiring stories of heroism that emerged from those days. When our nation responded to tragedy with indomitable spirit, unconditional compassion, fierce national pride and unshakable resolve. On December the 7th, 1941, Marines and sailors not only showed that they were well trained, they embodied the courage and indomitable spirit for which America is known. Storming beaches, prevailing against insurmountable odds, the Marines of World War II showed the world the meaning of uncommon valor. Not until September the 11th in 2001, would the United States see another attack of such magnitude on American soil? This time, the attacks occurred at the heart of New York City, the Pentagon, and a field in Pennsylvania. Hey, six and a half, Bob. Hi, ma'am. How you doing? Are they going to be able to get somebody up here? Of course, ma'am. We're coming up for you. Well, there's no one here yet, and the floor is completely engulfed. We're on the floor, and we can't breathe. Okay. And it's very, very, very hot. I saw in the pocket of fire. We should be able to knock it down with two lines. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? 78 floor. No more 1045. Go on. Freedom itself was attacked this morning by a faceless coward, and freedom will be defended. In a moment, a beautiful September morning turned into the modern generation's day of infamy. And as with Pearl Harbor, a day marred by tragedy also became a day of exceptional heroism and selflessness. Marines were among the first responders when our nation fell under attack on September 11, 2001. They, along with other citizens, 
join the throng of firefighters and emergency personnel risking their own lives to help the many victims. But I remember giving out my car and asking mom, is everything okay? And she was like a plane just flew into one of the buildings. The plane just flew into the World Trade Center. I left a clear, sunny day on the, on the Brooklyn side of the city. When I got across the bridge, I was ID'd by the NYPD. And I reached into my left breast pocket and I pulled out my old expired Marine Corps ID card and I showed it to him. I'll never forget what the cop said to me. He said, give him hell, Staff Sergeant. A number of those first responders lost their lives right here. Like so many in the 10 years since that day, these Marines thought first of their duty and their fellow Americans, and they didn't hesitate to do the right thing. I remember been getting closer and closer to that last tower, and about a quarter of a mile away, I saw the tower collapse right in front of me. And when I got towards Central Park, or Park Road South and Vesey Street, I ran into a group of about five military guys that were in their utilities like me. They we came under attack. They, they got into their uniforms and they responded to help out. There's a couple Army guys, Navy guy, and an Air Force guy, and one Marine. It was great to see another Marine on site in his uniform, and he introduced himself to me as uh, Sergeant Carnes. I saw the Marine there, and I, I said, hey, Marine, how about let's take a walk? And I saw, we saw about a platoon size of firemen, about 20-some firemen standing in, in like a platoon formation. And I walked up to him, I said, this is Staff Sergeant Carnes from the Marine Corps. To your knowledge, has anybody been conducting throughout the day search and rescue operations in the epicenter of the collapse? They said, no, Marine, if you go in there, you're gonna die. We could see the 16 acres, and there was nobody in there but us. We started yelling out at the top of our lungs, United States Marines, is anyone here? We would listen and then, then proceed about 10 meters and then stop and yell again. We could hear some muffled cries for help coming from what was once the depression of the South Tower. And I remember yelling over the staff, Sergeant Carnes, hey, I think I have someone. I said, who do we have down there? And they said, two PAPD police officers. They gave me their, their names. He had heard us yelling out, United States Marine Corps. And he, he said to his partner, who was trapped with him, Sergeant McLaughlin, he says, he says, Sarge, the Marines are here. We're gonna get rescued. He knew that once he heard United States Marine Corps, that they were gonna live. Of the many first responders killed, 23 had previously served their country as Marines. I knew two of those Marines very well. Uh, both assigned to 6th Communications Battalion. First was my gunnery sergeant, Matthew Garvey, who I'd known for six years. The other was a police officer, and was a legend in, on a police department, as well as being a first sergeant of the 6th Communications Battalion, Michael Curtin. Both perished that morning. We lost 17 Marines that day. We honored them on our Marine Corps birthday, November 10th. We called the roll of all 17 Marines that were killed, and it's an honor and a privilege to be part of that, uh, part of that celebration. In the Marine Corps, like when you you're, you go out in the combat environment, you know that your life's in jeopardy. I have to do my job to make sure that my brothers survive, and vice versa. It's the same thing when running into a building, the same thing on 9-11. I'm sure the brothers knew at that particular time that they were not going to make it. But they went in and they did their job, and their job was to get those people out. On the days of both attacks, we saw the best of Americans at home. At that moment, strangers became neighbors, and we were all defined by only one word, Americans. From operations in Iraq and Afghanistan, the stories of valor like Medal of Honor recipients Corporal Jason Dunham and Sergeant Dakota Meyer are examples of heroism that emerged. We marked 10 years 
of continuous combat operations in which the United States has relentlessly taken the fight for the enemy. We're going to be here for the people, no matter what it takes. We're going to build relations with the locals. It's obviously the key to win this war. The fighting in the area is getting better, and they only shoot a couple bursts, and then they, they leave because they know we're going to kill them. I don't look back and wish I hadn't deployed or think, why me? Because why not me? I wouldn't, I wouldn't want someone else to get injured in my place. So I don't feel bad about what happened. Yes, I struggle like all Winter Warriors do. But if I had to go back and do it all over again, I would definitely deploy. You know, I didn't know how past generations of Marines would view our generation until I got off the plane in Bangor, Maine. And it was the receiving line of all your World War II vets and Vietnam vets. And, but they're, they're, they're clapping for us and calling us heroes. We're not heroes, we're just today's Marines. As Marines, we will not stand down until the mission is complete and our nation is once again secure. The indomitable spirit comes not only from the proud tradition of our nation, but from the confidence that our military forces will ensure no act of aggression against the United States goes unanswered. Sergeant Major Barrett and I stand shoulder to shoulder with each of you. Thank you for your strength, your understanding, and your support as we carry out the mission of the Corps. Happy 236th birthday, Marines, and Semper Fidelis.